The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Strauss here with realagriculture.com. I'm back here today with another Canola School episode and I have here with me Hector Carcamo who is a research scientist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. So what sort of conditions do the flea beetles like? We mentioned drought, they really like those dry conditions but how, do, how does heat impact them? Well that's a very good question because it uh, depends and I'm sure people will always say it always depends on something right. Uh, with flea beetles it depends where you are because uh, we have two species of flea beetles in, uh, in the prairies in Canada. If you are in the south, where you have drier conditions, uh, especially in southern Alberta, southern Saskatchewan, basically in the brown soil zones, or the, uh, if, if you prefer the uh, vegetational terms, in the mixed grass or short grass prairies, you have uh, the black crucifer flea beetle. If you are in a more northern area, more humid areas, such as in the parklands where there's more aspen forest or in northern Alberta and northern Manitoba, then you will have more of the dry flea beetle. In fact, uh, the parklands extending to southern Manitoba also, right, around Winnipeg. So around there, they have more of the, uh, the striped flea beetle. And that is a very different beast. So that one likes uh, more cold conditions and also it likes more humid conditions. Whereas the crucifer flea beetle, the black shiny one that we have around here in southern Alberta, that one likes like the heat, it likes dry conditions. So last year was a really good year for flea beetles. Uh, we saw the plants just way overcrowding of, uh, of canola plants at the, uh, at the pod stage. And uh, this year I have, I have seen uh, flea beetles on flixweed. I think flixweed is a very good plant, it's a sentinel plant to uh, to uh, monitor insects like flea beetles, lycus bugs, cabbage hippo weevils, almost all these insects that are attracted to canola, they, they, they love flixweed. And I have seen so many flea beetles now on flixweed. It's, uh, it's very easy to collect. Uh, I think I collected something like 4,000 in, in about two minutes sweeping of flixweed. So they're very, very abundant. There you go, flixweed is good for something. <laughs> Maybe it could be the next trap crop for flea beetles. Control. Maybe. That, that could be my next research project. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're looking at the different kinds, uh, the crucifer and the striped flea beetle, um, is there different thresholds between the two of them? We, we um, recommend the same thresholds. Uh, it, it seems that the amount of feeding they do has about the same level of damage. Uh, the timing is really important, right? So if you are in southern Alberta, uh, traditionally, and, and things are changing a little bit because we had a series, uh, probably we, we don't remember anymore, but uh, from about 2009, we had about three or four years of uh, fairly, fairly humid years. And that caused a bit of a shift in the species composition in our area. So we, we started to see a few more of the stry flea beetles. So if you have a combination of the two insects, it's very difficult to predict what will happen. But normally, if we have a, a dominance of the crucifer flea beetle, if you plant your canola as early as you can, and yes, I know you have to avoid frost also, <laughs> don't plant way too early, but if you plant early enough, say you know, late April, early May, you have a good chance of escaping the peak of the crucifer flea beetle. Now, if you plant late, and especially if you are the last one to plant, right, uh, you, could, you could end up with lots of uh, crucifer flea beetles. If you live in northern Alberta, it's the opposite. If you plant the earliest, then you are probably going to be the trap crop for this striped flea beetle because that one comes out a little bit earlier. It, it wakes up from their sleep after the overwintering period and it will, it will come to whatever canola is planted the earliest. So some farmers there, they actually wait until their neighbors plant. So he or she will get the flea beetles and then you will be safe. So. That might be a strategy. So make sure you buy them coffee at least if you do that. <laughs> if they take all the flea beetles. So you're mentioning some trap crops. Is there any research surrounding that right now on uh, actually seeding trap crops for flea beetles? Because uh, we, we, we do know what an impact those flea beetles can have. Yes, um, um, I've done a little bit of work. We, we tried to use uh, to see if they, if they didn't like yellow mustard because there was a lab study that showed that they, they, they don't prefer yellow mustard as much as canola. 
but in reality in a field condition they will eat just the same and I think you people have experience already planting mustard and if there's nothing else around they will eat it so some of these trap crops only work relatively speaking if it's in relation to another crop so if if the Filipinos have the option to eat canola or yellow mustard side by side they will go after the the uh, the canola and, the, and eat less of the yellow mustard but it doesn't always work it depends if, if there's only yellow mustard then they will eat it i think we need to do a little bit more work to uh, to identify uh, crops that may be more attractive or perhaps we can entice the crops with some chemicals uh, the next study that we might be doing if if, if we get the uh, the grant is to see if we can attract flea bills with mustard oil so this is going to be a next research story and see perhaps it's possible to use a combination of a trap crop and mustard oil to to concentrate them in a place and, uh, and spray them uh, similar to what we suggest for cover seed for people. Now let's talk revenge spraying and those beneficials. Uh, at what point, if you're seeing these flea beetles out and about, at what point is it too late to spray or it doesn't really make an impact? And what are some of your considerations when it comes to looking at those beneficial insects? Right, yes. Yeah, so um, once your canola is at the, well, it depends who you read, right? Uh, some people will say that as, as soon as canola has true leaves, right? Uh, when canola comes out of the ground, it only has the tiny, fleshy, juicy cotyledons that are very attractive to flea beetles, right? And that's what they feed on initially. Uh, if the plant survives that stage and produces true leaves, then the risk is much lower that they will be affected by the crop. You may still have some effect in terms of uh, delay of maturity, which could be a concern for uh, green seed, but the plant will normally survive once it has true leaves. Uh, once it has more than two true leaves, then you should not be uh, spraying anymore. If you, have, if you have three or four true leaves, even if, the, uh, even if there is 50% damage in those true leaves, the plants will actually survive and, and grow and produce adequate yield. So they sh you shouldn't really be spraying at that time because anytime you spray an insecticide, our insecticides are not specific to flea beetles. Uh, they will also kill carabi beetles, they will kill spiders, and we are seeing more and more studies showing that uh, these beneficial insects that are predators uh, spiders in particular, there was a study recently done in Sweden where they showed that spiders take a lot of flea beetles out of the, of the system. So think about those beneficial insects, you know, when you're spraying, especially if your plants are already past the vulnerable stage, uh, because revenge spraying doesn't really, it might make you feel good right now, but uh, in the long term, you're really shooting yourself in the foot by killing the beneficial insects that are in the field, right? <laughs> And any research when it comes to spraying headlands or strip spraying or anything like that? Yes, uh, that's something that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy to see many growers doing that. that uh, instead of spraying the entire field, they realize that especially when conditions have been cold, like we, this year we had a very cold spring, so the flea beetles, they hop, right? They don't fly very far, so they're hopping around and they're mainly concentrated along the edges of the fields. So you can get away by only spraying the borders of the fields rather than spraying the entire field. And again, that will help you to first reduce the cost of insecticide and you burn less uh, fuel, so less uh, you know, greenhouse gases and less negative effects on climate change. And you don't kill all the beneficial insects in the entire field. So.